on? Yeah, sure, just go ahead. Okay, great. Um, first of all, um, it's, it's true, I don't necessarily see that all anarchists in Israel um, understand themselves as coming out of um, a left communist anarchist uh, uh, tradition that was found originally in the kibbutzim. I'm not saying that. I was aware that Uri Gordon um, did make that argument in his book, Anarchy Alive, and I was a little bit surprised about that argument given that um, I know many people on the Israeli left um, have a strong criticism of the, uh, the colonial um, structure and aim of the kibbutzim movement. Um, that's something that Gabriel Peterberg um, himself um, was able to show, I think, in very clear terms. So I'm not making a general argument about um, what Israeli anarchists believe or that all of them hold to this view, but I did find that view and I thought it was important um, to call it into question. The second point is that uh, it seems to me that BDS has only applauded the anarchist work and that those kinds of actions um, uh, are precisely the kinds of actions that BDS approves. Let's remember that BDS does not say, is not against any form of cultural exchange. That would be, I think, a mistake. What BDS opposes is those efforts to produce cultural exchange um, um, that include um, Israeli institutions that fail to oppose the occupation. It seems to me that anarchists against the wall um, are uh, among the most important Israeli groups that oppose the occupation and that any solidarity efforts with them, as we've seen all, the, all along the apartheid wall, um, are appreciated and affirmed and they're precisely the forms of alliance that BDS sa says is okay. And the reason why they are okay is that they are explicitly, vocally, and insistently anti-occupation. So I hope I've made myself clear. Judith, could we just back up for a second? Uh, I don't know whether everybody in the room will understand uh, the BDS position. I mean, just uh, how you understand that and then what your position on that is. Um, well, um, the BDS position is a, is a complicated position and has been formulated over time. In 2005 and six. it seems to me that a uh, new rendition of that came came about and that um, you can find it very easily on the web. Um, um, I did try in my paper to distinguish between um, forms of cultural alliance that are not based uh, on an opposition to the occupation and to, um, to other forms of um, Israeli discrimination um, uh, and um, and, and, and um, Israeli refusal to acknowledge the right of return for Palestinians expelled in 1948. And it seems to me that um, for individuals certainly and, and for institutions that take a vocal and clear position on those three issues, um, uh, uh, the um, uh, th that is paramount for the BDS movement. So um, it's only certain kinds of exchange that are um, that are uh, uh, um, counseled against according to BDS guidelines, and those are forms of exchange with Israeli institutions that right. fail to take a clear, explicit, and sustained position against the occupation and against the other really important points of, um, of, of criminality um, 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 that the Israeli state is, is guilty of. Okay, thanks very much. Do you want to come back on that? And those are the points that you raised. Um, sure, yeah, I guess we just misunderstood because I thought that you mentioned Tayush in the context of the works of solidarity that are bound to like fall into a paradigm of unequal no. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah, I, so what I, I, my point is this. I mean, actually, Tai Yush, especially the work that Tai Yush did on the, in the West Bank, that's really important solidarity. And the reason why I'm actually focusing on these groups is that I, I think that these are the most 
um, effective and important forms of solidarity um, that are happening. I do wonder sometimes when I read the writings um, whether people, Israelis who decide to become anarchists or who um, take very strong positions against the occupation sometimes still um, think about their method and their identity within a national frame. And so that's a different point. The, the point I'm trying to think about is what's the operation of binationalism or even uh, an operation of solidarity that moves beyond national frames? Um, uh, and 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 how do we how do we think about that practice in ways that actually help us uh, um, criticize the not only the existing borders of that nation, um, which have expanded illegally since 1967, but also the existing forms of citizenship that that nation has in place and which are becoming ever more severe, especially as they impact um, Palestinian Israelis. So. My, my question is, is there a way to think about those forms of solidarity that actually enter into a post-national frame? And then, of course, that's complicated in thinking about what the form of nationalism is that, um, or the appeal to the nation is that Palestinians are themselves making. Yeah. And what I was trying to show toward the end of the paper was that there are several Palestinians who are actually interested in thinking about forms of community and action that have at least some resonance with anarchist notions, even though they would not be called anarchists, but they are to a certain extent improvisational. They are disruptions of ordinary life, and some of them are counter statist. And I'm 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 a little bit dismayed by the fact that um, that sometimes those those scholarly and political works are not taken up um, by those who are trying to make solidarity precisely. With the Palestinian people, I see. I see there being more sites of convergence in thinking about non-state forms of solidarity than I think have been pursued in the literature that I've read. Because the the, the idea of nations sort of floated in the paper in a very interesting way. There's the in the critique of uh, Uri Gordon, uh, insofar as the opposition to the state, the anarchist opposition to the state, whether that escapes from an idea of the nation. On the one side, then on the other side, the um, uh, the, the attempt not to identify uh, that Palestine wasn't a state; um, you know, it, it's a nation. The Arab, it belongs to the Arab nation. So we get this this question, which is raising you know, what what is a nation, and what um, might that be some uh, some way of thinking thinking through this question. But I take it your the issue that's been the basis of a lot of your thinking recently has been this question of of, of alliance, right? And, uh, and, and forms of solidarity. But yes, I think so. You know, and it's probably Whether that requires a national remember, framework. Yeah. Go on. It's Sorry. important to remember that as much as the BDS um, is against certain forms of cultural exchange where an explicit opposition to the occupation um, is not clear, um, it also supports certain kinds of exchange where that opposition is absolutely clear. So that, that seems important. It's not just a negative, uh, not just a negative movement. But let me say this. Um, you know, it's confusing. Um, if we assume, well, Pal Palestine as a nation wants a state and hence wants to become a nation state, sometimes we are not, um, we're not right. Sometimes the idea of nation that's being um, developed is actually counter status mm -hmm. or it's a national alliance with other Arabs or it has regional um, affiliations that would um, would suggest that the notion of the nation that's being articulated is not one that would easily uh, assimilate into the idea of the nation state. Similarly, it seems to me that, um, and there's, I know, enormous uh, range on the, on, uh, within Israel on this topic, but when some say, look, it is my responsibility as an Israeli citizen to oppose the state and actually engage in anarchism um, in all of these different ways, there's something of a contradiction in saying it's as a citizen or it's as an Israeli citizen that I oppose this state because one is in a way invoking the very citizenship um, that one needs to be undoing. So that's a, an interesting paradox. I'm not saying it's a contradiction or it shouldn't be done. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it. it's... Um, it produces a really important task. 
because yeah. if anarchist activism fails to think about the radically unfair ways uh, and illegitimate ways that citizenship has been produced and maintained by the Israeli state, then then it's it's stopping it's stopping it's not only stopping short of a radical critique, but it may actually be depending upon that very idea of citizenship to frame its separate political uh, trajectory. And so I'm wondering what forms of alliance mm -hmm. uh, are possible on that basis, and also and they might be necessary and necessarily limited on that basis, right? That's a possible yeah. answer to me. Yeah. But it may also be that certain forms of alliance are foreclosed. Okay. With your permission, Judith, I'd like to open it out a little bit and get, there's a few, there's a, well, there's a lot of people that will ask questions. If we just take a few, and uh, the first one is Chiara Bottici, the, uh, the conference organizer with me, and she, yes. you're, you're going to see her. She's going to be in front of the, you got to see, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I don't yeah, know you can see, there you go, you can see each see other, you. that's nice. Yeah, yes, I see you. Good. Okay, um, uh, first of all, thank you very much for contributing to, to this conference. Um, I have a, actually a very simple question, which is, has been going on in my head uh, during your talk, and is, but what do you exactly mean by anarchism? You know, easy question. It, if I understand correctly, from the beginning of your paper, you started by saying uh, that anarchism, which began as anti-status, has now uh, had the chance in uh, the new global movement to uh, broaden uh, its scope, including uh, opposition to corporate form of exploitation, um, ecology, etc. Now, it seems to me that, uh, but here I want to, to know what you think about it, that anarchism has, not, uh, has always been more than simply opposition to the state, right? Anarchy, uh, anarchy, has always meant, I mean, from the et its etymology onwards, the opposition against any form of government or uh, domination, that is, against any form of hierarchy. So, for instance, today, it's a pity you haven't been here, we have been discussing the relationship between anarchism and feminism and discussing the claim that anarchism is by definition feminist because if it is against any, any form of opposition and hierarchies, to so it must also be against the oppression of women. Same goes for colonialism. Anarchism is by definition anti-colonialism. As so, and here is um, um, another question for you. So it is, it has also to be, by definition, against any form of political organization, be it nationalism or any other form of uh, political community, which is hierarchical uh, inside itself, must be uh, against, um, so fought by anarchists. Yes. Okay, thanks. Great, thank you. Um, so, um, well, first of all, I understand anarchism as having a long and interesting history and also to have competing definitions as part of that history. So um, uh, I myself am not interested in a denotative fixing of the term anarchism. I want it to continue to have the historical life that it has and to continue to take new forms. Um, I feel like, like definition can be an act of hierarchical subordination, <laughs> right? So. Definition is not my point, and, and yeah. it's usually the way people proceed who start with first principles, right? Like, yeah. first we're going to define it, and then we're going to see whether it applies, but I think we're trying to move away from that idea. I see it as inaction, I see it as uh, underway, I see it as sometimes a form